Hello. Last weekend was Father's Day. This is obviously a time to celebrate fathers and father figures in our lives. However, for some people, this can be a challenging time. Perhaps they've lost their father, or maybe their experience of fathers is not a positive one. At church that day, we had as our Bible reading the parable of the prodigal son. Despite its name, this story is more an exposition of exemplary fatherhood than anything else. Jesus was an amazing storyteller and used parables as a way of illustrating eternal truths and speaking about the nature of God and how God wants this world to be. This is one of my favourite parables because in it, Jesus is seeking to say something about the immense love that God has for each one of us. In this parable, we hear that a man has two sons. At the very start of the story, the younger one boldly asks for his, in his share of the inheritance. Essentially, he's wishing his father dead. Jesus goes on to say that he leaves home almost immediately goes to a foreign land and blows all the money on prostitutes and wild living. Pretty soon, he has nothing. Jesus then says that in desperation, he finds work with a local pig farmer. He's so hungry, he contemplates eating the food of the pigs. Now, this is an important detail as Jesus's audience is Jewish and pigs were ritually unclean. Therefore, this young man has hit absolute rock bottom. In a moment of inspiration, though, he realises that his father's hired servants live better than he does. So he quickly resolves to go back to his family and ask to be given that role. He even goes so far as rehearsing a humble speech filled with contrition to say to his father. And so he heads home. The next line Jesus tells is this. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. These words would have been shocking to Jesus' audience. Patriarchs in Jewish communities did not run anywhere they most certainly would not run through the middle of a village to passionately greet a child that had wished them dead. But this is exactly what Jesus has this father do in his parable. Furthermore, as the son starts to recite his pre-rehearsed speech of contrition, the father interrupts him midway and calls to the servants and gives them these instructions. Quick, bring a clean set of clothes and dress him. Put the family ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and then get a prize winning calf and roast it. We're going to feast. We're going to have a wonderful time. Jesus paints a picture here of the abundant love for each and every one of us that exists in the Father heart of God. The young son rejects his father, ignores him, disrespects him, wants nothing to do with him, and only actually seeks to restore any kind of relationship when his life hits the rocks. In contrast, the father is clearly yearning every day to restore the relationship, hence why he sees him even when he's a long way off. He must have been continually looking out for him. That immense, overflowing love is there regardless of what the son has done, in the same way that God has immeasurable love for each and every one of us, just as we are. Earlier, in the same Gospel of Luke, Jesus is seeking to illustrate how deep God's love is for us, and he tells his listeners that even the very hairs of their head are counted. In this parable, the parable of the prodigal son, 
Jesus reveals the truth that God, as our Father, loves us all abundantly and unconditionally. I pray that you might be aware of that in the coming days. Bless you all.